When they found her in 2016, she'd been on the lam for 40 days in a small town near Dollywood in Tennessee with her criminal husband. Her pit bull, she said, was on the verge of becoming immortal. It was a pizza of all things that finally brought her down. This is the story of Sarma Mingalis, the bad vegan. Hi friends, I'm Katie, and this is Katie Does Crime. The raw vegan restaurant Pure Food and Wine was already a thing when I moved to NYC in 2005. I got really into the fine dining scene a couple of years later, and Pure Food and Wine was always on my radar, but I never visited because, well, I like meat. And when I heard raw food, I thought of salads I could easily make at home myself. But Pure Food and Wine didn't need my business, because they were already making bank off the likes of Anne Hathaway and Owen Wilson. The restaurant was set in a townhouse on Irving Place, a tiny street near NYC's Union Square. The street only runs for six blocks before ending at Gramercy Park, an exclusive garden open only to residents of the neighborhood. You have to have a key to get in. Pure Food and Wine had a sprawling backyard with that same sort of exclusive feel that was attractive to celebrities. The menu was made up of things like the $14 Master Cleanse Teeny, a play on the Master Cleanse diet, with organic sake, lemon juice, maple syrup, and a cayenne pepper in a martini glass rimmed with crystal date sugar. I'm not sure that's how the Master Cleanse works, but... I'll take two, please. There was a cauliflower samosa appetizer for $13 and a mushroom ravioli main for $24, some bean tacos for $22, and a slice of pumpkin pie for $12. A lasagna made with layers of zucchini and tomato instead of noodles was a big draw for $24. Nothing was cooked above 120 degrees. And Sarma's restaurant was grossing $7 million and profiting $500,000 per year thanks to all of those cauliflower-loving celebrities. Sarma was born in Newton, Massachusetts on September 10, 1972. Her father was a physicist at MIT, and her mother, a chef, got her interested in food. But Sarma would choose to go into economics at the University of Pennsylvania and then move to NYC to work at Bear Stearns in 1996. She then worked for Bain Capital in Boston and NYC's CIBC in investments, but food kept calling to her. And in 1999, Sarma graduated from the French Culinary Institute here in NYC. Her first big break had been with her cookbook, Raw Food, Real World, 100 Recipes to Get the Glow, and Sarma's restaurant was turning into the epicenter of the raw vegan world. It didn't hurt that she looked like a model. She had three juice bars and a snack brand being sold at Whole Foods. She had a shelter puppy she was in love with, a pit bull named Leon. And she had a new friendship with Alec Baldwin, who met Sarma at the restaurant and invited her out to the Hamptons. He later met his wife at the restaurant too, and eventually got her onto Twitter. It was there that a funny guy who called himself various names became one of her first followers, and soon Sarma was interacting with him on Twitter too. He supposedly guessed why Sarma named her dog Leon, after the movie Leon the Professional. She had written about it on her blog, where he could have easily seen it, but she was too smitten to realize that. It was enough to make her want to meet the guy, Anthony Strangis, face-to-face in 2011. Now, everything I'm going to say about their relationship is completely denied by this guy's attorney, so take it with an appropriately sized grain of salt, but here's the story from Sarma's side. Anthony impregnated her just a few weeks into dating when he, how shall we say, left the baguette in the oven a little too long when Sarma had told him not to, so she got an abortion without telling him in early 2012. But Anthony was making claims that he could pay off her $500,000 mortgage and pay a million dollars to the original investor of Pure Food and Wine so that she could be free to completely control her business. And that was, of course, very attractive to her. But she hadn't seen a dime from Anthony four months later, so she told him about the abortion and started ignoring his messages. They were broken up, and she was alone with Leon the dog again. In December of that year, though, the two were back together and filing for a marriage license. Now, no one understands why this blonde beauty would be shacking up with this tubby guy from the Boston suburbs who had, you know, supposedly abandoned his wife and baby in Florida. But Anthony told Sarma that being his wife would make her more protected. Protected from what? She wasn't exactly sure. But Anthony talked vaguely about a violent brother with suspicious connections and said that Sarma's laptop had also been hacked. For her protection, he needed her email, phone, and bank account passwords. He told Sarma that some of her family and employees couldn't be trusted, and he privately asked Sarma's mom for $450,000, saying that Sarma was close to a nervous breakdown and this would help her. 
Then Anthony told Sarma that giving him this money would make the universe reap benefits upon her in multiples. She could expand her brand, make a documentary, stop factory farming and change the world, and also just stop aging and never die. That's right, he told her that she would become immortal. It was a test, he said, to prove how deserving she was. Another test had to do with Anthony's obesity, which was causing a rift in their relationship. He had been moderately fit when they met, though not as much as his online photos had shown, but all of his tuna salad sandwiches with extra mayo had caught up with him. He was no raw vegan, and she had to prove that she could deal with that. He also put her belongings into storage and then didn't pay the bills so her personal memories would be sold off. Another test that Anthony's mysterious brother insisted upon. And if she didn't pass, the universe or the cosmos or some other force would come for her. But if she continued to pass the test, Leon the dog would live forever. Over time, Sarma moved more than $1.6 million from her business banking to her personal bank accounts, and Anthony spent $1.2 million of it on luxury watches, travel, and gambling at casinos in Connecticut. The story goes that when Anthony was a three-year-old in a Boston suburb, his mom first heard him say, baby needs a new pair of shoes while pulling a set of dice from his pocket. Apparently, Anthony's dad was a gambling man and had passed the itch onto his young son. One employee of Pure Food and Wine said Anthony would make him bring cash from the restaurant to a bank nearby, but instead of ever depositing the money, Anthony would hop into an Uber with it and just take off. In January of 2015, the employees of Pure Food and Wine walked off the job and began picketing for not being paid. They were used to the accountant asking them to wait to deposit their checks for a few days, but not getting paid at all. They weren't even getting their tips because those were usually pooled and distributed in the checks. Now, Sarma hadn't been around for months, and she was off in Europe saying she was trying to grow the business, and the bounced checks to employees were just, you know, caused by the bad margins in the restaurant business and the expensive ingredients she used. And also, she was changing banks. And also, they weren't alone. She was missing her own rent payments, too. But, you know, changing the world comes with sacrifices. The restaurant was forced to close. But a month later, Sarma was asking some of her beloved clientele to make investments to get it going again. She was able to take in over $800,000 for them with just a tiny lie about needing the cash because she'd had to use the restaurant's profits to help out her mom. In April 2015, the restaurant reopened, employees were paid their back wages, and Sarma told her investors that she would repay their money by selling the company to a wealthy businessman named Michael Caledonia. But it turns out there was no businessman. She had lied. Michael Caledonia was Anthony. But Sarma's employees had worked for her for years, and they still cared about this woman they had called Sarmama. They loved the restaurant, too. When one of the investors found that Anthony had once been arrested in Florida for grand theft and impersonating a police officer, one of the restaurant employees said, Nothing makes sense. Where is the woman I knew the last nine years? Sarma, seemingly unfazed by anything going on around her, was still waiting for Anthony to make good on his promises, to bring her financial freedom and everlasting life. Some have suggested that Sarma was effectively brainwashed by Anthony, that he had taken control of her like a cult leader. Sarma's lawyer says he combined the best techniques of cult leaders, abusive partner control, manipulation, and con artist, along with the worst tactics of prosperity theology, meaning when you give me your money, you'll get 10 times back next week. And Sarma was the type of person to give her whole heart to someone. When the restaurant paychecks bounced again, Sarma and Anthony went on the run together, escaping the 84 employees suing for back wages and the landlords and vendors demanding payment. They went to Vegas, Louisiana, and Tennessee to hide out. That's where they were when they were arrested in the spring of 2016, when Anthony ordered a pizza and wings from a local Domino's under his real name. Sarma, you should know, had nothing to do with that pizza and was living off of vegan bowls from Chipotle. They were found staying in separate hotel rooms. Aside from being fugitives from justice, they were wanted for a litany of offenses, such as grand larceny, violation of labor law, and scheme to defraud. One of her employees said, the owner is so intent upon animal rights, which we appreciate, but I find it rather ironic that she doesn't support her workers in any way. She's violated so many of our rights at this point that it's laughable. Sarma spent five days at the Rikers Island prison before paying her bail of 350 k but apparently she didn't bail Anthony out. In 2017, Sarma pleaded guilty to stealing 800 k from investors 
scheming to defraud employees for 40K and not paying 409K in sales tax. She was reportedly facing up to 15 years in prison, but instead got about four months in jail and five years probation. Anthony served a little under a year at Rikers Island and also got five years probation. In 2018, Sarma filed for an uncontested divorce from Anthony, meaning he wasn't fighting it. Today, she lives in Harlem here in NYC, running her dog's Instagram account. She seems to have a sense of humor about things, posting captions like, I do all I can for his longevity, if immortality is off the table. I'm eagerly awaiting the release of her story, Bad Vegan, on Netflix on March 16th, because a few questions remain for me. Namely, what is the meat suit they mention in the Netflix trailer? Knowing that Anthony was always putting Sarma through these tests to prove she was worthy of the cosmic gifts supposedly coming to her, I'm picturing like a salami dress that Sarma had to endure wearing. And Sarma says that all of the crimes were all of Anthony's fault, that he manipulated her using control. But there's also this idea that she may have been the one running the con on everyone else. The vegan birdie Madoff, they call her, in reference to the finance tycoon who ran the biggest Ponzi scheme in history. Anthony's lawyer says that Sarma is this smart, savvy businesswoman who believed that her husband had supernatural powers to make her dog immortal. It doesn't make sense. And can we talk about Louis C.K.? It seems like he and Sarma had one romantic night together that may or may not have resulted in her getting an STD. Leet emails show that when Sarma messaged him about it, he replied, I never swore that I was clean. I told you I may or may not have given this to you. I'm sorry if I did. If you gave it to me, it's okay. We all share the current human bloodstream, which includes this kind of stuff. I should have worn a condom. You should have made me. We should have done a lot of things. We are human. What an understanding guy. And also, it turns out that Sarma was having an affair with her attorney while he was representing her. The guy who was also the attorney for El Chapo apparently never told her that he had a wife and kids. The hits just keep on coming. Sarma describes herself in her blog as having stepped on a landmine, and she hopes that her story can help other women. So what do you think about her fall from grace? Was she the victim of mind control? Was she just another rich lady defrauding her investors and employees while she was, you know, off vacationing on their money? And most importantly, can I get a taste of that meat suit? Thank you for tuning into my YouTube video. I'm just a true crime fan like you are, and I really appreciate you taking a chance on me. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you liked spending this time together. I'd be so appreciative. Until next time, I'm Katie, and this has been Katie Does Crime.